everybody. Happy Sunday and welcome to today's show. Uh, we have guest Peter Hegedus, founder of thetraderspath.com, and he will be going over uh, segment one and two today. I'll be doing segment three and four. Generally, sometimes we do a mix, but uh, today it's just going to be uh, Peter doing the first half, me doing the second, and um, you know, excited to uh, talk about some different trades. Peter's been uh, been trading over the last couple weeks, and um, kind of what he's trading into next week, and then uh, as always, going over the broad market recap and the top three requested charts. Uh, and if we have time, I may throw in a couple extra in there. So um, just jumping into segment one, I will uh, let Peter jump on, introduce himself. And uh, Peter, welcome to the show. And thanks so much for joining in for the second time. All right. Thanks, Jake. You're let welcome. me get my screen up here. All right. So... Thank you for the introduction. Glad to be back on the show a second time. And I want to talk about uh, a couple trades we've done, how we've used TrendSpider tools to find some really good setups for our members. Um, but really briefly, I know you're going to cover the market later. I just want to mention one thing that has us looking for a little bit different types of trades and entries and exits, and will help make some of these trades we're talking about that we've done, as well as ones we're going to do. Um, kind of what's what's driving our mindset. And that is just the fact that we have been in a choppy market. All right. So if we look at we look at the spy here on the middle of April, and we look at the spy here in the middle of May, we're right back where we were a month ago. Um, but we've traveled a lot of ground both up and down on the way. So, you know, as we as we approach the market and look at that, we're always looking for setups when we get into these choppy markets and we don't have a good directional trend down or a good directional trend up. We generally try to look to buy support and sell resistance as opposed to trying to chase breakouts or chase breakdowns. So with that in mind, that brings me to the first trade we're going to talk about as far as something uh, we, we've done, we did a couple weeks ago, about a week and a half ago into this past week, and that is SDC. And SDC is a name that uh, we've day traded a ton. Certainly it's been a volatile name. A lot of folks have been trading this. And with this one here, we noticed some really interesting things with anchored VWAP, right? So if you look at this chart, you put an anchored VWAP on the high, it made this big move down, eventually came back up, stalled there a little bit, and then had this really strong move over, kind of out of out of nowhere after you know this big gap up, then it looked really tired, and then boom, right up through. So looking at that, we decided, well, let's go ahead and throw an anchored VWAP on there, and something really interesting happened. Struggled to get over it, struggled to get over it, struggled to get over it, and then here on the sixth, made a really strong move over. And this thing instantly became support and instantly became support. So we were able to get long SDC in some calls. Um, and also interesting to note, there was very heavy call sweep activity on the day we got long and it just shot up for us here. Um, so we got, we got a nice move up opened up the following Monday and just went right up to nine from an entry that we got right around 750 on that hold of anchored v And interestingly enough, and I'll be honest, we got out of the trade um, here. We didn't get the following day's gap up, but look what happens when you put anchored v to their IPO day. Ooh. Perfect. Almost to the penny. As, as you like to say on some of your um, some of your tweets, you can't make that up. Can't make it up. I it just probably... goes right to VWAP. So uh, really great trade for us. A, a bunch of our members got 100% or better on the calls. Um, and we didn't have to you know, get the very top. But um, just a great example of getting the meat of the sandwich, using anchored VWAP here for some really yeah. solid support, getting in off of support, and then riding that up close to resistance. What is, uh, I don't want to waste too much time here because I know we're on a little bit of a time crunch, but what does Smile Direct do? Smile Direct, interestingly yeah. enough, 
Uh, they they make they make the uh, kind of, they're, they're not in I don't think, believe they make the Invisalign product but they make something like it. What's interesting on this recovery okay. is their business was way down and they started making face shields for COVID nineteen for first responders and I think that's what kind of got some of the excitement back in the name. Interesting. See, and that's a, that's the beautiful thing about this is you know. There's there's no time in the market where tech it's just technicals or just fundamentals. It's you know SDC was just I mean there was so much volume holding uh, down below and it was just setting up beautifully and then you had the fundamentals kick in and um, I was talking to Dan about this the other day and you know it's it's kind of like people can say oh yeah news is what triggers a stock price well no it's generally the stock price has a technical setup and the news is the trigger. So, uh, so, you know, or the fundamental kind of sentiment and the sentiment just overall. So that was a cool example of that over the last couple of uh, weeks. Yeah, very much so. Very much so. And, and, you know, people like to forget sometimes a candle is really a measure of sentiment. And, you know, these candles are telling us what the sentiment of the stock is. And then when you can layer in things like, volume support it, it just gives you great confidence in a trade so i'm going to go ahead and step into the next one here which is a name that we were trading when a lot of folks weren't talking about it that much but boy all of a sudden on thursday and friday a lot of folks started talking about gld uh which is a you know is is basically an etf um uh, based on on gold itself it's not a gold miner so this is one uh, we, we started watching kind of back in here. And I went and threw an anchored VWAP on this pullback, right? So we had this low, big gap up here, got really wicky and kind of strange, sharp pullback and put in a bottom uh, on, on the pullback right here. And I said, well, that's gonna be, you know, as I kind of looked back, I said, that's gonna be an interesting spot, probably an important spot to watch how it held that area. And sure enough, we were able to get an entry first time here on this hold of anchored VWAP. Go out in here and we're able to trim in the next couple of days. Eventually closed out of the rest of the trade here, but I said to myself, wow, this is interesting. Gold tends to be very choppy overnight, as I'm sure many of you know, because not just the American market and American central banks it, but certainly European and Asian ones can too. So we just, I, I basically set an alert on this anchored VWAP with a little bit of sensitivity to it. And we just kept buying it. We bought it here and we sold it when it got all wiki here, missed out on a little profit there. We bought it again here, trimmed it up when it got real wiki near the upper trend line. So, and then eventually you could see it just started to form a really clean pennant and, you know, starting with anchored VWAP and then the pennant, you know, we were able to just keep getting entries and calls on that support, sell the resistance, bought the support, sell the resistance, bought the support. And unfortunately we sold the resistance again. Uh, we didn't get to, to go through the uh, big breakout, but um, what's really interesting here is this could certainly come back down and, and retest some levels. Um, you know, it'd be, it'd be especially interesting if it had a couple of down days and held this trend line here. So that's something I'll probably be setting an alert on uh, in the coming uh, coming couple of days as well. Awesome. All right, I'm curious, are those, um, did you draw those or were those um, auto trends? I drew those. Okay. I drew, yep, yep. Yeah, I, the, the, the auto trends are great, but as, as these were forming, you know, they, I was pretty early to just get these trend lines in there. I had to adjust them a little bit to get them right, but you can almost see the bottom trend line doesn't matter. You can just keep buying anchored VWAP as well. Yep. It's almost like the VWAP created the, uh, the trend line. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's something we love too. When, when you, when you see anchored VWAP and it lines up and gives you confluence with something else, whether it's a trend line, whether it's a moving average, uh, whether it's anchored volume by price, when they all line up, it just it gives you so much confidence in a trade setup. Absolutely, you got more. You've got you got multiple participants, and it looks like even uh, with GLD right here, you've got the MACD crossing there as well right now. So that could be interesting into uh, the week ahead. 
Absolutely, Mackey's crossing, and boy, this TTM um, or, or you know BBKC squeeze, another way to call it, uh, looks really good here coming up to that zero line and getting ready to push on through. And if that wants to release and fire long, I mean, this thing could really bust out. I will take it. I have GLD calls right now, so bring on the inflation. <laughs> good for you, I, th I think you'll be in good shape. So. Hey, I'll take a I'll take a pullback too, though. I've got more ammunition to uh, to go in. So, but uh, th those have been fun the last few few days. SLV, GLD, GDX. We'll go over that a little more too in the uh, in the request. But uh, AMD, what do we have here? So AMD, this this is a example here again of anchored VWAP being just so important. Um, so this is one. We've been we we trade this almost daily on a, on a day trade basis where where we have uh, one of our one of our moderators this he, he likes to refer to this as 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 his baby, um, but I noticed something interesting in that we started getting these declining tops we started making a lower low so I did a little bit of a volume study, and taking that top, I put an anchored VWAP on there. I also put an anchored VWAP on this gap up here that kind of started this, this run up here and said, wow, this is, this is interesting. That's acting as support. And let's see what happens here. So we came up over this and then promptly lost it. So put the, we put this on watch for, um, for Wednesday here, and you can see it opened right near anchored VWAP, tried to push over, and really quickly got rejected. So in this case, you know, rather than buying support, selling at resistance, we said, wow, this, this breakout failed. It lost the 20, it lost anchored VWAP. Again, you have really nice confluence there of your moving average and your anchored VWAP. And as it popped over and then came back in, we got short. And uh, it, was, it was going to be a swing trade. It turned into two thirds of it turned into a day trade down here. And then the following morning, um, we ended up pretty much cover, uh, you know, selling the rest of our puts here at the open as, the, as AMD started showing some rel relative strength to the SPY. And again, probably part of that was it went and tested that lower anchored VWAP. And you can see now this, this could very easily just coil between these anchored VWAPs before it wants to pick a direction and your, your BBKC squeeze is indicating this is getting ready for a bigger move, but just worked as a great short on that failed breakout. And then the, you know, former breakout level holding as resistance to be able to short that down. And one other interesting thing I want to point out on this, it doesn't look on the chart like much of a move, but boy, if you take this position tool and say, I want to get short on, on the rejection of anchored VWAP. I want to set a stop just above that upper wick there. And I want to set a profit target down at the next anchored VWAP. You can see you've got almost a, a 3R risk to reward on that. So really good risk to reward. We did it with puts and got a fantastic return on them percentage wise. Beautiful. Well, uh, you know, segment one is all about proving ground, talking about trades that you guys took, how you made money. But going into segment two, and I'll, uh, I'll let you unshare your screen there so we can go into uh, the second segment, which is staking your claim, talking about some trades that you're currently um, looking at and um, kind of what are you using to find these trades and, and exactly, um, you know, what tools are you, are you kind of looking at to, to find these? So we, we do a number of different things. Oops, hold on. Sorry about that, guys. I guess we, well, yeah, I guess before we, we uh, hear your screen, I just want to go over a little bit of this. So um, as far as the market scanner and watch list goes, um, you, you mentioned multiple scans and a bullpen. What, what exactly does that mean? So with our, with our scanning, we're always scanning. I scan every night. I scan a ton over the weekend. Um, but typically what we do is I find trade ideas two different ways. Um, one way is scanning. So for example, I might run this, um, this BBKC up um, scan that I do here. That's looking for 
uh, of a squeeze, you know, what we call a squeeze in that BBKC squeeze pattern. It's looking for price action moving up. It's looking for various volume parameters. And then I can run that scan and it will, will give me everything I need. Or I could simply open up my watch list here to that scan. And there's, there's all my names um, that meet those parameters. So that's one way we, and I have multiple scans that I run like that. Some looking for long, some looking for shorts, um, some looking for, for particular moving average uh, setups that we have. But it's a really great way to find names. But the other thing I do is throughout the week, um, I just keep a watch list called the bullpen so that when I see something interesting set up, for example, that's um, you know one of the things we noticed with SDC and how it got on my, my watch list is I saw a ton of call sweeps on the name ahead of all that. So I would take a name like that and throw it in my in my bullpen and when I'm when I'm going through my scans, I also go through the bullpen and see what looks interesting. So you can see some names I'm I'm not showing today and um, aren't necessarily on my watch list for tomorrow. But then I'm watching this week. I've got this bullpen of various names here that that's I'm constantly looking for. Uh, one we are going to talk about today is APT. Is I found APT um, just from putting it in my bullpen. Okay, cool. Well, let's. Uh, so what is APT? So APT is another um, crazy coronavirus name here. Let me just turn these drawings off. Um, wow, it's basically it, like another. Yeah, it's it's a it's a wild trader. Um, it's got some really interesting things we like here. It's got a beautiful long squeeze here. It's got some interesting things happening with anchored VWAP. So. If I anchor VWAP to this kind of double bottom after this big initial run up, you can see that was a resistance area through there. Tried to pop over, couldn't. Tried to pop over, couldn't. And on Thursday, it took it out in a big way. And sure enough, where did it where did it find some resistance? Is at your next anchored VWAP level, which is anchored to the highs. So this is this is popped over, then came back in. But interestingly enough, too, if I throw a horizontal line on there and just look where all these wicks were, it held this little breakout area. So here you can see it tried to break out and then lost that. Here it held that breakout area with the, with the horizontal line there. So that's something we love to see, breakout, retest, and hold. So this is something we decided to put on watch. You can also see MACDs trying to cross back up. And with this, again, we don't want to chase the, the breakout. We don't want to be buying this wick, right? We don't want to be buying this wick. What we're looking for here very simply is hopefully a bit of a soft open tomorrow, a move back up through 15. And again, using the position tool here, you can see if I set a stop a little below my lower anchored VWAP, and then put a profit target just at that previous high, you know, three and a, three and a quarter uh, R here. Beautiful risk to reward on this setup. And boy, if it wants to break that high and go even higher, um, certainly one that could squeeze to. It's got huge short interest. I believe the short interest is is somewhere in the forty to forty five percent range. Wow. Ooh. Well, I mean. I did see some news over the weekend about Corona stuff. So uh, it seems like a lot of these guys, Invax, CODX, have made their moves. So, uh, you know, this could be a, a laggard in the, in the picking. And the, the other thing you can also uh, note here, if I, just, if, I, if I just take anchored volume by price to the kind of the start of the run here, you can also see just a beautiful shelf of volume support built there. So... I don't think there's a ton of risk that this is going to really break down and sell off on you. You have just great support with that anchored BWAP and the anchored volume by price. That makes sense. Awesome. All right. So next setup we have into this week is H-U-Y-A. Huya, I guess is how you say it. I don't know, um, but it's fun to say that way. But here again... 
you can see this is this is what I like to refer to as a tail of two VWAPs, right? We've got a lower VWAP here where this has been consolidating around it. And then you've got an upper VWAP um, that's been at resistance. And then at the same time, you've got, and let me just get myself to the right spot here. You're starting to build a nice base of anchored volume by price. And again, here, you've got a very nice BBKC squeeze starting to push up above the zero line, a uh, very bullish setup that we trade all the time. But again, in this choppy market, I don't wanna chase the breakout. What I wanna look for is a little pullback to this shelf of volume support to get myself an entry and look for a move back up to that upper anchored VWAP and setting a stop just below the lower. Really nice risk reward. And you can also see here, and again, this is where we like to talk about, we like a confluence of different things. I've also got my SMA 20 right there to support me. I've got a trend line that was resistance that now potentially could prove a support. So just really like that risk reward for an entry here to a push up to this area. On top of that, this is one that's got earnings Wednesday after the close. And very often these names, as, as we all well know, like to run into earnings. And if you play the options, you also tend to generally see a little bit more um, IV come in as you push into that earnings date. Yep, yep. As far as, as, far as this goes, um, is this one a, what kind of play is this? I'm not familiar with HUIA. Honestly, on HEYA, I have no idea what they do. Okay. Well, for us, this is purely technical. Um, you know, the other thing I do like here that I'll, I'll just point out as well wasn't necessarily something that, that I found, but again, we always look to these types of things. Really nice raindrop candle on Friday as well. So that wasn't like, you know, a move where there was tons of volume down here and a little pop. I mean, you've got virtually no volume in the first half of the day and everything's up there. Uh, near the high. So if that could come down, retest this area and hold, I like I like the chances to push up through there. Okay. Beautiful. That was a oh, good example. The, uh, that raindrop too. There's a blue raindrop right at the bottom on uh, in that mid-March uh, bottom. But uh, yeah, I'll be going over a blue raindrop example um, with NVDA today. Uh, NVIDIA. Oh. So yeah, I'm excited to go over that one. Cool. All right. So the next one we have, and this came this came right out of this um, this scan that I ran earlier. You can see it right there. Show up on that that watch list that uh, TTM up scan, which is looking for the BBKC squeeze and positive price action. Is this setup in NDAQ? Which interestingly enough, a couple of the exchanges showed up on my scans this weekend, um, and are also showing up on my watch list. So. So kind of interesting, maybe some excitement that uh, I know the New York Stock Exchange is supposed to be opening up in Memorial Day, and maybe some of these other exchanges are getting a little excitement because of that. Um, but this is a great example here um, for me of just pattern recognition and knowing what some, some things that have been happening in the market lately. So I looked at this chart. And this immediately reminded me of a couple other names um, that, that we've traded successfully in the past month. And I think a lot of folks have. This looked a whole lot like Peloton did back here, right? Where I had a shoulder, this giant, what I like to refer to as a giraffe neck, this giant neck and, and a head, and then another shoulder and made this beautiful move there, came down, made another big move up. Also reminded me of work. Again, here you can see shoulder, huge neck, head, and then almost made a couple shoulders here, but you can see how it held that anchored VWAP and pushed up. We see kind of the same setup here in NASDAQ. And I'll go ahead and put this drawing tool on. You can see that shoulder, head, shoulder. And then through here, some interesting stuff with anchored VWAP. 
gap up there. Anchor Bebop's always interesting, anchored to a spot where we have a gap. You can see broke a little, regained. Now holding is pretty solid support. And then the high of this move here, we anchored BWAP to, and that we took out on Thursday and followed through on Friday. And then on top of that, let me just adjust this a little bit. Again, we're building a really nice shelf there of anchored volume. I mean, look how much volume you have right at this level. And this just looks, it wants to start climbing these stairs, right? So what we're looking for on this one, and you can, you know, there's your, there's your uh, neckline on the head and shoulders. I don't want to buy the neckline. What I want to do is buy this really solid confluence of support where I have two anchored VWAP levels and my SMA 20, try to get them on a pullback test and hold of those, look for an entry somewhere in the 109 to, to 110 area. And then ultimately, if I can break out and just go to the top of that neckline, I've got, again, a beautiful risk to reward with a stop set a little bit below that lower anchored BWAP, which is now looking like stronger and stronger support. Beautiful. Um, as far as, uh, as far as, you know, your, your favorite one into next week, as far as the ones you just went over, what would be the one that you would like the most? Uh, the one I would probably like the most, just because it's one that could absolutely rip if it gets going, is this APT. If I can get myself a nice a nice entry here, and this thing wants to to make that move over anchored VWAP, there's just not much to stop it. Um, it like at forty to forty five percent short interest, and it, and the nice thing is, although it can spread a little funny, it's plenty liquid. I mean, it it trades tons of shares every day. Interesting. Kind of looks like Lake, um, I forgot what exactly Lake, uh, the name of it is, but Lake is the uh, ticker symbol, but yep. I think they're in the same type of uh, market. So it's been interesting to see. That one kind of was respecting that anchor view app from that big gap up and then down in, in late February. But yeah, uh, this, one, this one's been a little weaker and you can, you can kind of see, I probably have to adjust this a little bit. Um, but you can see it's it's kind of lost this volume shelf. And to me, this one becomes really problematic. Mm -hmm. um, if I push up here, I've got a lot of overhead supply, probably a lot of folks who got long here who are sitting in trouble. Yep. No, exactly. Uh, it'll be interesting to see, um, you know, what happens. But uh, the SMA 200, it looks like you use that quite a bit. Is that something you just look for kind of, confluence as well just uh it's on sma 200 support it's on anchored view app support so you're, you're really looking for that confluence of across the board yeah all the time i mean my my my, my favorites are is when i can get anchored vwap with the the 20 and or 50 simple moving average 200 i always have there just because it, it's something a, a, a chart typically doesn't cross a lot but when it comes across, you know, when it comes up to it, it's usually uh, a big, big level, right? You, you come up to the 200, it's hard to take it out. Um, and sometimes it's hard to lose it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, thank you so much for going over some of these plays. As far as, uh, as far as ones into next week, APT was one Peter was definitely looking at. And honestly, I mean, you got that huge volume base. It'd be hard not to uh, at least put it on the watch list. So um, going into the second half of today's show, right? These these really work. Uh, these work great uh, when we've got some type of uh, kind of. I mean, you're always going to have moves in the market, but sometimes it's a little easier to have a move when the broad markets are working with you. So going into uh, segment three, looking at the broad markets, looking at SPY, the Qs, IWM, and VIX. There's something really interesting across the board. One, we're pretty much at crucial FIB levels um, on SPY, QQQ, IWM. And the interesting thing is they're all different levels. Um, you know, you've got the, the SPY ETF at the 0.618. You've got the Qs at the 0.782. So, uh, you know, there's all different levels. So that's one thing that's going to be a topic going into segment three 
as well as the fact that we bounced off this massive point of control in this break-even zone last week, um, right off of this anchored VWAP from this pivot that we saw from the bottom. So we moved up quickly, pulled back, and then right from that area where we bounced off this anchored VWAP and the static image that I'm trying to show with my mouse, you know, we did bounce nicely off that last week. Um, so just jumping into the charts and going over a live chart, we can see here SPY, the same chart we were just looking at, except, um, you know, here we've got the anchored volume by price starting at the March 23rd low. If we start this from the February 19th high, this reversal from this uh, huge trend up before we started the coronavirus crash, we're pretty much trading at the same exact spot. So it doesn't matter if you start your volume profile here or at the uh, March low, we're pretty much trading at the point of control for both of those points. So we call this the break even zone because we have this zone at which most people are holding at break even. You know, they're essentially not, not in a profit. They're not necessarily in a loss. They're just kind of stagnant. Well, if you're stagnant in a position, generally you're just going to hold through it and, and figure out if there's a trend. Um, and so what, that's what happened here. Some people were in the profit. Price quickly dropped. Supply started to outpace demand as people started to try to take their profits, which wasn't a ton at this point. And then right when we get back to this break-even zone, you've got this huge bid that comes in, and we've got two days of, uh, of green candles really showing some strength into next week. However, you look at the weekly candle and you'll see we're at this line of best fit is really the only thing I can call it. And I call it the line of best fit, this big blue zone, because this has been an area where the price has just been essentially uh, trading around, mean reverting back and forth to the upside and the downside here. So um, what we have here, as I mentioned, we've got the 61.8% FIB literally acting as perfect resistance last three weeks in a row. But we do have that weekly MACD trying to cross here. So that is probably the main thing that I'm looking at. A lot of people like to look at the MACD. Um, so this becomes almost a self-fulfilling prophecy some of the times. The main thing, though, would be to, to break out through this, uh, this blue zone that's highlighted, uh, not necessarily as one price level, but as a range. Because prices respect ranges, not necessarily an exact number or exact price level. So going into the queues, you'll see something pretty similar. We bounced off this break-even zone shown by this highlighted green zone. Notice that we did actually have confluence of this resistance line that acted as support. Uh, we did not fill the gap all the way. So if I move this over, you can see there is a slight gap still above here. And um, you know, from a weekly perspective, we are trading right at this 78 0.6% fib. We've actually already got the MACD cross on the month on the uh, weekly QQQ chart. So you know, are the Qs leading the pack? We'll have to see. But this one has filled the gap a little quicker than SPY. IWM is definitely laggard as well. You'll see here that we did have an almost identical setup with the anchored volume by price showing a ton of volume holding here, which was pretty much exactly where. We have this anchor VWAP from the 19th high, and then this reversal candle here from this initial pop and then pull back. And this is our bottoming, uh, bottoming candle here, kind of our capitulation candle before the next leg up. And both of these were really right in this zone. And remember, with volatility like it is still, I mean, volatility is still relatively high, the VIX, which we'll go over in a second, you can see um, you know, you're not always going to have the price respect this exact zone. Notice that you're going to have sometimes quite a bit of margin of error around these lines. So this is exactly what happened last week. If you were just using the anchor view app as your levels, you would have easily been stopped out twice here. Um, but if you did have a little bit of, uh, of uh, wiggle room with these levels, you would have been able to stay in the trade. Going to the weekly, you can see that we did really have a hard time breaking through the 50% FIB level, which as you can remember from the SPY, we were at the 0.618. So these, these ETFs are at different levels um, from this measured move from the very top to the very bottom. So that's something to keep in mind as well. 
going into the VIX, which is going to be the last broad market chart that we touch on here, you'll see that we've got this really defined breakout on this falling wedge. However, um, you know, I've seen this before where it looks like, oh, this is a perfect test of resistance. And then we literally just go straight down to the support zone. Not saying that's going to happen into next week, but you do have a lot of of uh, Fed money that is now available after uh, this weekend's news, I think $3 trillion or something. So, um, you know, you've got a lot of liquidity in the market right now. Uh, and for the market to really have those big drops, you need a lack of liquidity. Well, the Fed is providing that for us. Uh, the, the weekly chart does show this area of resistance in December of 2018 did act as support uh, with a little wiggle room down here as well. You remember, anytime you're trading, you're always going to have to have some type of margin of error. If you use stops that are too um, too tight, you're always going to get stopped out. And you're never going to make money. Um, so being able to adjust those stops and, and, you know, the stop can be a function of your personality. I mean, if you're really high strong and you know that, maybe maybe you adjust your stop losses and your, and your uh, overall strategy to uh, essentially kind of... Uh, to take into account that your personality may be a little different than other traders. So uh, your strategy is based on your personality a lot of the time and what, what you can handle, what you can't handle. Um, going into the VIX, though, with the weekly, you can see that, you know, the average person that was looking at this general level probably would have stopped out. I mean, that, that would have been the, you know, going by the book, you know, thing here. This would have been pretty much everyone stopped out. Of course, this is where it's reversed. And then we have this massive move to the upside before um, closing, you know, relatively stable into next week. Um, so that is segment three. That's the broad markets into next week. The only other one that I want to mention here is XBI. And that's simply because XBI on the monthly chart is one of the few ones that is just showing this absolute um, just massive uh, possibly breakout through this five-year kind of topping pattern we've got here. And so if we do finally break through this area, that will be, uh, that will possibly show us that, you know, uh, this is maybe a sector that's going to help move the markets higher. Um, so that is segment three. Going into segment four, we do have some different um, tickers that we saw a, uh, quite a common theme across the board this weekend. SLB, GDX, GLD, um, NVIDIA. And so we'll pretty much jump right into this. But you'll see here that over the weekends, these change very drastically. Remember a couple of weeks ago, it was, it was airlines. That was the big topic. And airlines really haven't done anything since then. Um, and so you'll see over the, over the weeks, if you watch these consistently, you know, you'll, we're kind of seeing what's hot. Well, with SLB and GDX and GLD and all those, um, Peter went over that a little bit. But, uh, you know, going into SLV, uh, I want to go over just simply the fact that SLV was a really fun trade last week, playing that anchored volume by price and playing that gap above. So you can see here, if we anchor this uh, volume by price or volume profile from this high on February 24th, you'll see here that you know, we do have a perfect move up through this volume gap that we identified last week. And so, you know, this gap almost filled exactly to the T. We actually didn't fill the gap all the way on the downside, but the gap did fill all the way on the upside. And look where we found resistance, right at this supply zone above. And you'll see we actually do have another open gap above here. And it's actually two gaps. You have this open gap from this move and then this gap down again. So if I actually make this the full gap, it's a little bigger, but it's not that big. This is a lot of supply to get through into next week. So that would be something for the bears to look at. Um, but for the bulls, I've seen these areas just blast through the next two days um, because there's so much demand. If you go back and look at SLV and we look at some of these uh, kind of gap ups like we had recently, you'll see that generally these like to continue. Uh, here's another one, gap up just absolutely gapped up and ripped. So if we look at kind of the past, this may just be getting started. You know, you, I, I don't know exactly what's going to happen, but, you know, we've got this same setup from a couple a couple uh, years ago. Same exact thing that I was just going over. 
if we circle this, we broke out through this uh, horizontal resistance area. We gapped up and literally just went straight up the next few days. If we take this horizontal level and clone it and put it here, you'll see something very similar. We just broke out of this horizontal level. We've got this gap up. Do we just melt up to fill that gap in the mid 16s? Uh, we'll have to see. But if you're looking at the monthly chart here, you can see that there is this big descending triangle. Um, and if you go to the weekly, you'll see that we do have this recent breakout. We've got this anchored VWAP all the way up here from October 2012 that has acted as pretty perfect resistance multiple times. So is the price going to pretty much just gravitate right up to that zone? Uh, we'll have to see. But if we do turn on the MACD, you'll see that we are crossing uh, very similar to a lot of the other setups out there. But, um, you know, back testing this MACD uh, is something that I did over the weekend. And uh, sometimes you'll have actually the bigger move when the histogram starts to increase. Remember, the histogram is a function of when the fast uh, or the distance between the fast and the slow. So as the fast, this blue starts to move up towards the slow, notice the histogram starts to increase. So I like to even look for the histogram increasing rather than just looking for the MACD crossing here. So um, that is SLV. That is one that I'm really looking at um, into next week, but also everybody else is too. So um, is this one that too many people are watching or is this one where so many people are watching it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy? Uh, we'll have to see, but going into the next one, GLD, I want to uh, go over GLD before we go over GDX. A couple of reasons for that. One, and I went over this on the weekend video, but this is something that's really fascinating here. You'll see that we almost have the same exact candle here, right? Um, if we if we put an arrow here and, and highlight this candle versus this candle, I mean, they're almost identical, literally. However, if you turn on the raindrop, you'll see something very different. You'll see uh, actually on Friday's candle, a lot of that volume was more focused near the top 50% of the range, whereas the previous candle that showed up here was more of just kind of a, you know, barely any volume at all during the second half of the day on the top of this range, whereas you can see there was two decent chunks of volume up here. So um, if we go now to... GDX, we'll see something very uh, similar, but a little different where we've actually already broken out of this ascending triangle. Um, and you can see here, if we draw this, uh, this weekly candle, we've already broken out of this really big horizontal area that like everybody was watching. And this was pretty much from um, the end of 2012. If you go to GLD, if we're just trying to look for those laggards, you'll see that we are actually not there yet um, for that 2012 high. So here you can see here, here's the 2012 high uh, pretty much in September, and we are not there yet. So is GLD a laggard versus GDX? We'll have to see, but uh, this is one that I am uh, you know, watching as well as everybody else, uh, especially as inflation becomes a, uh, a topic again. Going into the last one, NVIDIA. This is one that I really am excited to go over simply because we did have this blue raindrop forming right at the apex of this symmetrical triangle. So if we just go ahead and turn off the volume by price, you'll see here, you know, this is this is pretty textbook. You've got this blue raindrop forming literally within two candles of breaking out or breaking down below this uh, this support. And we do finally have that breakout. And you can see we almost had a perfect retest of this area of re resistance, which then acted as support before moving up. If we draw a horizontal line here, we'll see that we definitely had uh, volume supporting the price over this breakout zone. And uh, you definitely will see that uh, you know this may be a continuation play into next week, simply because you had a lot of buyers showing support above this trend line. And uh, remember, for every buyer, there's a seller. So we know this was selling volume, but we're more interested to see that those sellers sold to somebody who were willing to buy those shares above this resistance line. If we didn't have volume here, that means that buyers were not there to absorb that supply, and that would have been something to be concerned about. 
if we look at this uh, weekly candle, I mean, it looks very similar to, uh, honestly, like GLD or GDX, where we're breaking out um, on this uh, on this rounded bottom where GLD, GDX have not done that yet. Um, you know, if we if we pulled up an Amazon chart, you'd see this this setup happened quite a while ago. Um, so this is a pretty classic kind of just rounded bottom setup, breaking out of this resistance zone and pretty much just absolutely ripping them. Um, this is when you'd probably throw in your fibs, you know, do a measured move from here to here. You'd see that the, the 1.618 is way above in almost the 400 zone. So that would uh, that would be the next area to watch simply because we don't have any other levels to watch because we keep hitting new all time highs here. So, um, you know, that pretty much wraps it up for the requests this weekend. Um, I, I will go over one more since we do have a little time left. ATVI. This is one that is a really interesting one because we pretty much have this rounded bottom that's trying to form. You can see it here. If we, uh, if we turn off this anchor view app here, this is forming. It's not going to be exactly the same as NVIDIA, but it's got the same type of setup. You've got this big move up, you've got this big base forming, and then you've got this resistance above. So if we look at ATVI on this shorter term time frame, you'll see a couple different things. You'll see one, the gap did not fully fill. So if we take this area and we move it up, there is still a gap above to about 77 bucks. If you show this from a more localized uh, setup, showing the volume profile from this bottom here, you'll see that there's a massive base being created here. Um, so you can see that from this point in time when we bottomed on March 17th, you can see there's a ton of volume holding at this area here, which created the first base. And then we've got this second area here that's creating the second base. And so, you know, if we've got supply that dries up and demand remains constant, we'll get a move up. If we have demand outpacing supply, we'll get a move up. And so those are the main two things to keep in mind into next week. For the bullish side, the bearish side, we do have this anchor VWAP that has been holding pretty well. However, you do have that gap below if you turn on the gap snake here. So, um, you know, as I mentioned in the video this weekend, you always want to have the bullish and the bearish view because you cannot get too um, one sided. So um, that is pretty much what we're looking at um, on the charts for today. We tried to go over as many as we could within the one hour time period. Uh, we are going to end this a little early just because I do have an obligation I have after this. So um, we will go into the final uh, slide here, going over uh, the website real quickly for Peter, thetraderspath.com. His Twitter handle is at PLH stock. So um, Peter, is there anything else that you want to go over before we cut this off? And again, thank you so much for joining us today and going over some trades and, and uh, some trades into next week that you're also looking at. Hey, thanks, Jake. The only thing, uh, only thing I'll add that I just noticed as you were talking about it is if you look at that NVIDIA setup, that is just like Peloton work and the NASDAQ setup I'm talking about where it's a head and shoulders with a giant long neck that yep. broke out. And it seems, you know, and like Amazon, right? Amazon had this very similar setup a few weeks ago before it just absolutely ripped. So you're starting to see a lot of these different setups kind of taking the path of the leaders. And um, that's something uh, that I've been watching the last couple of weeks. Uh, you have seen, though, some of these uh, laggards have not necessarily continued. Um, the airlines, for example, Boeing, GE, all of these industrials that just cannot catch a bid because nobody's interested in it. They're interested in what's hot right now and what's trending. And, and generally following the trend in this market has been the way to go. But uh, Peter, before we, before we cut off, I, I did want to confirm you do have a sale coming up, right, as well? Well, we're just we're offering a uh, discount for friends of TrendSpider for our annual swing trading service. So all the trades we talked about today and all the setups we're talking about are swing trade setups. And we are offering friends of TrendSpider a $100 discount off our annual swing trading service. 
Beautiful. And I think, um, I think uh, we just posted that in the chat as well. So make sure to check out that link in the chat. You can get $100 off for our, uh, their standard plan, uh, which generally is $549. Bucks. So um, that pretty much ends it for today. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining as always. Peter, a big thank you to you for jumping on on Sunday evening and sharing some different things with us into next week. And um, we will be uh, taking a two-week break as we end season one into season two. Uh, we will be going into a slightly different um, just overall uh, setup of the, the, the show. Some of it will be recorded. Some of it will be live. We'll be putting out more information on that as we get that all set up into early June. And so, Peter, thank you for ending this season off uh, on a good note. And uh, looking forward to season two and having you on again. All right. Thanks very much, Jake. Happy to do it. All righty, everyone. Have a great Sunday and we'll see you soon.